Hi everyone, welcome to US Immigration Help Channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about how to file the new version of Form I-824, which will expire on the, on the February uh, 28, uh, 2026. The Form I-824 is application for action on an approved application or petition. If you are new to this channel, uh, my name is Liman, and I make videos for a family-based immigration uh, to simplify the immigration process. First of all, I am not an attorney. I'm here to help you based on the information I have from USAS and also based on the information I have from uh, the work instruction that comes with the form. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe, share, hit the notification bell and give us a big like so YouTube can share the video with more people. So if you're ready, let's get started. In this, uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the file form I-24, filing fee, we're going to talk about the supporting document that you need to send to the form I-24 and also where to file. So basically, we're going to cover four parts. First, let's start by filing the form, I-824. As I said, do not file the old version that expired in 2023. Uh, USAS released a new form that will expire on the February 28, 2026. So this, top, this uh, top part right here, do not touch it. It's for USAS use only. Uh, the second part right here is for uh, to be completed by an attorney. If you use one, for us, we're going to start where it says start here. Type or print in black ink. You can type, then you can uh, print with black ink once you print it. As I mentioned before, this form is used for multiple purposes, so it is confusing. This video is only for people made a mistake on I-130. I'm going to show it right here. If you make a mistake on I-130, the beneficiary is in the United States and will apply for adjustment of status to that of a law for permanent residence at USAS uh, service office. If you put the city right here and a state, but the applicant is abroad, USAS will ask you to file I-824. If you file both of them, 61A and 61B, and you file and, and you as well and you put right here you answer the question 62a 62 62 b 62 c and usas will ask you to file i a24 so in both ways if you put both they will ask you to file a24 so one i want to answer one question right here because a lot of people ask me this question can i file this form uh, to get my uh, uh, application approved faster this is not for that case. This uh, form I-24, you file it only if USAS asks you to do so. Just an example right here. This is an approved notice, I-797 notice of action. If you read down right here, if the beneficiary decides to apply for an immigrant visa outside the United States based on this petition, you should file form I-24. If the USAS does not ask you to file I-24, you should not file I-24. So now let's go to our form and start filing it. So I am select one, uh, part one first, information about you, person filing this application. In our case, as I mentioned, it's gonna be petitioner. If you make a mistake on I-130, the applicant cannot file this form, the petitioner. So I am select the one that apply, petitioner. Uh, 2A, it's a baker, family name of the petitioner. 2B, uh, first name of the petitioner, it's the man, it's me. Uh, middle name, I don't have one, is in A. Uh, it does not let me put a slash right here, but when I print it, I'm gonna put a slash with a black ink right here. Let's go now to number three, company or organization name, if any, in A. When I print it, I'm gonna put a slash over here. Current or recent immigration status. They give you a note right here. 
if you if you are a US citizen type or print in a for item number four so I put in a if you put a slash right here that's not gonna let you do that yeah it is what it does but in the other one there's you you know the Adobe does not let you put a slash right here if you try if you see right here see it gave you answer only letters numbers space and hyphens so now let's go to number five certificate of naturalization or citizenship number if any this is what most people miss i don't know why but they miss it i'm going to show it to you right here if you go to this is your naturalization certificate you will have a number right here that's your naturalization certificate number right here you pick this number right here and you put it right here certificate of naturalization uh, or citizenship number you put it right here Alien registration number, if any, you have it. You will have it with your uh, uh, naturalization certificate. This is in the red rectangle right here. This is your A number. Or you can get it from I-797. It's right here as well. If you see petitioner alien number, it's right here. So A number, you can get it from both uh, naturalization certificate or uh, I-797 notice of action. Let's go back to our form. The date of birth. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows date of birth at uh, first first 1990 just an example and the country of birth is Morocco a country of citizenship or nationality is USA a lot of people put as well their uh, foreign country I think both works IRS tax number in my case is in A but I will do that once I print this form because it does not let me put uh, letters it must be only uh, numbers U.S. Social Security number. I think everybody knows this one. It's a nine digit. You, uh, you know what is a Social Security number. A USCIS online account number. You will have it only if you process your preview petition online. Mine, I, uh, USA, I filed a voting paper, but USCIS decided to process my case online and they sent me an I-797C. They sent me the USCIS online account would not start USCIS account access notice. I used my account right here, US, USCIS online account, and I log in my account and I see all the information I submitted to USCIS. So if you have it, it's right here, USCIS online account. And I always will start with I O E number. So if you have I O E number, you have USCIS online account. So you enter it right here, 12. So, mailing address, in care of name, Baker's Liman, 13B, it's a handle, Robert Run, it's going to be a United States address, state or town, Indianapolis, state, Indiana, and a zip code is 46254. The country, of course, automatically, once you select the state, uh, country, USAIS, will populate right here. Well, we're still talking about part one, information about you, person filing this application. I just, uh, I should put right here the same, but you know, to avoid mistakes, I put the four address right here. 100, rubber run, same as million address. Yeah, as you see, this form has changed a little bit. 100, rubber run, state Indiana, 46254, USA. There is a slight changes from uh, uh, 2023 version. Reason for request, that's the most important part of this uh, uh, form, which is uh, or application. You're gonna select one they apply for you. For us, we're gonna go straight to 1D. We are asking USAS to send approved immigrant visa petition to NVC. But as I said at the beginning of the video, this form has multiple purposes. It depends which one you select, you will be for the applicant or petitioner. That's why I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is for a petitioner. Uh, now let's go here to part three, other information. Uh, provide the following information about the principal uh, beneficiary of the pre preview application or petition if other than you. So 1A, form number of previously approved application or petition, in my case is one I-130, uh, receipt number on, uh, on form I-797, notice of actions. You got to check this one right here, it is very simple, I show it to you right here. If you go right here, you can have it from here, uh, receipt number. Or you can have it from I-797 right here, the same thing, receipt number. You can copy this number right here and put it on uh, I-797, a receipt number, 
I O A and I put your number. Final date of application or petition, you can get it from your uh, your I-797. Uh, filing is going to be received date. You put received date right here, copy it, and then uh, type it right here. Filing date of application or petition. Approval date, however, it is going to be not date. That's what you enter right here. Not date for uh, approved date. Uh, family name for the applicant. In my case, it's Bushy. Uh, given name is Nora. Middle name is in A. When I print it, I'm going to put a slash right here. Just always, I'm going to see that, but so we can remember. Date of birth is 01-01-1990. Uh, country, it's Morocco. Alien registration number. If you have I-797, the beneficiary has A number as well. If you can see right here, beneficiary, it's already USA. It's already assigned A number right here. You can copy it from right here and type it right here. Now, 2G day, time, G phone number, it's a phone, a Moroccan phone number, I put it right here. Mailing address, 3A in care of name, Bushinora, that's my spouse. Street number and name, 300 Hayin Masira, city or town is Kenifra, province is Kenifra, postal code 54,000, and the country is Morocco. These addresses differ, differ from country to country, so we're not going to be the same. Uh, we still talking about Patrick, other information. Uh, this is physical address. I want to put right here, same. I put the whole address, 300, Hayel Masira, Kinifra, Kinifra, 54,000, Morocco for the country. Now for dependents. You can answer these questions only if you selected option 1C. I'll show you right here. Only if you selected 1C. Uh, let's go to the form. It's better. It is very simple. If you selected only 1C, right if you if, if you uh if you find this form as a what and you, and you check one c you must answer uh dependence action uh, de uh dependence section so in our case we did not we selected one d to transfer uh, the approved petition to nbc so this part right here will be for us we're not going to do nothing with it because we did not select option one c so we're going to go straight to part four. Uh, part four is applicant contract information, certification, and signature. This is what confused uh, this form, why it is confusing for everybody. Now they are talking about the applicants. In this case, in our case, for, we selected option for 1D, means applicants here is going to be petitioner. I'm going to do I'm going to achieve this again. In this case, just the one we selected, option 1D, the applicants the contact information, certification and signature is going to be the petitioner. So one is applicant's date, time, telephone number is going to be a USS, uh, I'm sorry, US uh, phone number, the applicant mobile number and the applicant email address is going to be the petitioner information right here. Do not put applicant uh, information here. This is a petitioner in this case, if you select it, option 1D. So applicant certification and signature, this is signature. You date first, I always put a date. When I print it, uh, sign it with a black ink. Do not initial it or put your full name. So part five, we did not use any interpreter, but if you do, put the information of the, uh, of the interpreters. And the most important part is six, uh, prepare signature. This uh, the prepare should, uh, I'm sorry, what is the first? We use interpreter. The interpreter must sign it and then date it, not initially or put the full name. Same thing for the prepare. He must put the signature, sign it, and then uh, put the date. Not initially, the prepare must sign it, not initial or a full name. So part seven, we did not use any additional information, so we leave it. Uh, we did not do anything with it, so we leave it blank. Now, let's go to the second part, which is uh, filing fee. As you know, the filing fee went up for most of the forms. For I-824, the general filing is $590 for I-824. I'm not going to cover those uh, waiving fees for uh, other, uh, you know, uh, Categories. I'm not going to go through that. Just the general uh, filing fee 
is five hundred ninety dollars. Now let's go to the, the third part, which is document to include with IA24. One, you will need a letter explaining your error. You will need that because you can explain for USAS why you're requesting IA24. Why, you know, the error you made on I130, basically for 61, uh, 61A and 61B. You will need a copy of your I797 approval letter. And of course, you will need filing fee $590. I will uh, prefer uh, checks. It's bad. That's the best. This is the, just the form I-797 approved notice. Now, let's uh, go to the last part, which is where to file IA24. So, if you file this form, which is we do with USAS, you must use USAS Phoenix Black Box. US Postal Service, uh, service which is USPS, you use this address right here. If you use FedEx, UPS, or, or DHL, you use this address right here. I'm not going to cover uh, CBP because we did not uh, select uh, the other options, but for us, we used 1D, so if we file this form with USAS, so we're going to send it to one of these addresses right here. So this is the end of this video. I hope you like it. If you do, please subscribe, share, hit the notification bell. Thank you and see you next video.